Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. Please join me for the hymn of light. Also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set lights in the sky to govern night and day. In a pillar of cloud by day, in a pillar of fire by night, you led your people into freedom. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful, and you love your whole creation. And with your creatures we give you glory, through your Son, Jesus Christ, in unity with the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Please join me in reading the psalmody. I cry out to you, Lord, come to me quickly. Listen to my voice when I cry out to you. Let my prayer rise before you like incense. Let my uplifted hands be like the evening offering. Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep close watch over the door that is my lips. Do not let my heart turn toward evil things and keep me from the wicked ways of evildoers. But my eyes are fixed on you, my Lord God. I take refuge in you. Do not let me perish. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. From Matthew 5, verses 43 through 45. Ye have heard it that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor, and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you, and persecute you, that ye may be children of your Father which is in heaven. Probably no admonition of Jesus has been more difficult to follow than the command to love your enemies. Some men have sincerely felt that its actual practice is not possible. It is easy, they say, to love those who love you. But how can one love those who openly and insidiously seek to defeat you? 
Others, like the philosopher Nietzsche, contend that Jesus' exhortation to love one's enemies is testimony to the fact that Christian ethics is designed for the weak and cowardly, and not for the strong and courageous. Jesus, they say, was an impractical idealist. In spite of these insistent questions and persistent objections, this command of Jesus challenges us with new urgency. Upheaval after upheaval has reminded us that the modern man is traveling along a road called hate, in a journey that will bring us to destruction and damnation. Far from being the pious injunction of a utopian dreamer, the command to love one's enemies is an absolute necessity for our survival. Love even for enemies is the key to the solution of the problems of our world. Jesus is not an impractical idealist. He is the practical realist. I am certain that Jesus understood the difficulty inherent in the act of loving one's enemy. He never joined the ranks of those who talked glibly about the easiness of the moral life. He realized that every genuine expression of love grows out of consistent and total surrender to God. So when Jesus said, love your enemy, he was not unmindful of its stringent qualities, yet he meant every word of it. Our responsibility as Christians is to discover the meaning of this command and seek passionately to live it out in our daily lives. Let us be practical and ask the question, how do we love our enemies? First, we must develop and maintain the capacity to forgive. He who is devoid of the power to forgive is devoid of the power to love. It is impossible even to begin the act of loving one's enemies without the prior acceptance of the necessity, over and over again, of forgiving those who inflict evil and injury upon us. Forgiveness does not mean ignoring what has been done or putting a false label on an evil act. It means, rather, that the evil act no longer remains as a barrier to the relationship. Forgiveness is a catalyst creating the atmosphere necessary for a fresh start and a new beginning. It is the lifting of a burden or the canceling of a debt. The words, I will forgive you, but I'll never forget what you've done, never explain the true nature of forgiveness. Certainly one can never forget if that means erasing it totally from his mind. But when we forgive, we forget in the sense that the evil deed is no longer a mental block impeding a relationship. Likewise, we can never say, I will forgive you, but I won't have anything further to do with you. Forgiveness means reconciliation, a coming together again. Without this, no man can love his enemies. The degree to which we are able to forgive determines the degree to which we are able to love our enemies. Second, we must recognize that the evil deed of the enemy neighbor, the thing that hurts, never quite expresses all that he is. An element of goodness may be found even in our worst enemy. Each of us is something of a schizophrenic personality, tragically divided against ourselves. A persistent civil war rages within all of our lives. Something within us causes us to lament with Ovid, the Latin poet. I see and approve the better things, but follow worse. Or to agree with Plato that the human personality is like a charioteer having two strong, headstrong horses, each wanting to go a different direction. Or to repeat with the Apostle Paul, the good that I would... I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. This simple means that there is some good in the worst of us and some evil in the best of us. When we discover this, we are less prone to hate our enemies. When we look beneath the surface, beneath the impulsive evil deed, we see our enemy neighbor a measure of goodness and know that the viciousness and evilness of his acts are not quite representative of all that he is. 
we see him in a new light. We recognize that his hate grows out of fear, pride, ignorance, prejudice, and misunderstanding. But in spite of this, we know God's image is ineffably etched in his being. Then we love our enemies by realizing that they are not totally bad and that they are not beyond the reach of God's redemptive love. Third, we must not seek to defeat or humiliate the enemy, but to win his friendship and understanding. At times, we are able to humiliate our worst enemy. Inevitably, his weak moments come and we are able to thrust in his side the spear of defeat. But this we must not do. Every word and deed must contribute to an understanding with the enemy and release those vast reservoirs of goodwill that have been blocked by impenetrable walls of hate. The meaning of love is not to be confused with some sentimental outpouring. Love is something much deeper than emotional bosh. An overflowing love that seeks nothing in return, agape is the love of God operating in the human heart. At this level, we love men not because we like them, nor because their ways appeal to us, nor even because they possess some type of divine spark. We love every man because God loves them. Now we can see what Jesus meant when he said, love your enemies. We should be happy that he did not say like your enemies. It is almost impossible to like some people. Like is a sentimental and affectionate word. How can we be affectionate toward a person whose avowed aim is to crush our very being and place innumerable stumbling blocks in our path? How can we like a person who is threatening our children and bombing our homes? That is impossible. But Jesus recognized that love is greater than like. Only by following this way and responding with this type of love are we able to be children of our Father who is in heaven. Let us move now from the practical how to the theoretical why. Why should we love our enemies? The first reason is fairly obvious. Returning hate for hate multiplies hate, adding deeper darkness to a night already devoid of stars. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Hate multiplies hate. Violence multiplies violence. And toughness multiplies toughness in a descending spiral of destruction. So when Jesus says, love your enemies, he is setting forth a profound and ultimately inescapable admonition. Have we not come to such an impasse in the modern world that we must love our enemies or else? The chain reaction of evil, hate begetting hate, wars producing more wars, must be broken, or we shall be plunged into the dark, abyss of annihilation.
Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. Please join me in singing the powerful words of the Magnificent. together for the church, the world, and all of those in need. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the health of creation, for abundant harvests that all may share, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For public servants, for the government, and those who protect us, for those who work to bring peace, justice, healing, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are essential workers and those who are sick and suffering from COVID-19 and many other afflictions, and for those who are separated from loved ones due to physical distancing and quarantine, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this deliverance in the time of affliction, wrath, danger and need for those who feel as though their voices are not heard and who are asking to be listened to let us pray to the lord lord have mercy for all servants of the church and for this assembly and for all people who await from the lord great and abundant mercy let us pray to the lord lord have mercy help Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Giving thanks for all who have gone before us and are at rest. Rejoicing in the community of all the saints, we commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. To you, O Lord. O God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go forth with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please take this blessing with you. As you go on your way, may Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you the way. May he go behind you to encourage you. Beside you to befriend you. Above you to watch over. Within you to give you peace. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. Peace be with you.